You need to think of your art as a storybook. And in the same way a good book is a page turner, your art is the same. Think about it. We want to get to the end of a book. We want to feel all the feelings, be all the characters. And we as artists want to tell stories with our art so that we can keep your attention with every brush stroke. The more you are able to feel when you're looking at art, the more connected to it you become. And that's what it's really all about, connecting people through what we paint and helping them feel as if they are part of a story. So here are five ways to add interest to your paintings. And with each point that I will be talking about, I will show an example of where and how I have done that. So the first point is to add elements of surprise to your painting. And you can do that with adding pops of colour to your work. You can do that with uh, a little bit of underpainting where you paint um, a bit of like, say, warm tones and then you go over it with cool colours and the little bits of red and orange and warm colours pop out from your painting in unexpected ways. You can also play around with composition and paint in a very unexpected way. Um, so here I have done something a little bit different. This is my flower dance collection and I have actually used real pressed flowers in some of these paintings where you can't really tell whether it is painted or it's an actual real pressed flower. So um, I tried to make the paintings look very much like the real flowers. Um, for example, this pansy looks very much like the one I've painted. And I think with this one, I was wanting to go for this kind of trick of the eye feel to my work where some parts of the painting were so crisp and so defined that it would make you double take to to see whether it was something real or whether it was painted. And um, that's what I was going for with this collection. So it was adding an element of surprise and unexpected feeling to the painting. And this painting here was from the flowers collection. And with this one, I was wanting to create an element of surprise by adding um, some texture. So all of these um, paintings in this collection have this kind of flow to them, which is why they're called flowers. Um, I had a little play of words there, but um, I just let the paint kind of flow in different places and let it go wherever the water was going. And then I just wanted to add this unusual kind of unexpected feeling to my work which was to add this texture um, to some of the um, paintings within this collection and so that would be an example of the way I have added an element of surprise to my work. So the second way to add interest is to show your flowers painted in different directions. So some facing this way, some looking like they are growing upwards, some facing downwards, and the leaves are all going in different directions as well. And I think this is really important because it gives the painting uh, a harmony and balance. And if all the flowers were facing this way, then it would just become heavy on one side. So being able to think about balance in terms of the way and the direction in which the flowers are facing. Here is another example of um, where I have done that. So some flowers are facing downwards um, and, you know, they're all kind of balancing out the painting so that there's nothing that's making your eye kind of lean more on one side. So the third way of adding interest to your paintings is by painting flowers at different stages of their own growth cycle. And when you're doing this, you are doing something very interesting, I think. You're sharing the concept of time and how nature behaves over time. So, you know, you can show a full bloom like this and you can show one that's coming out and then a small bud and you're by doing this, you're telling a story of some kind. You're sharing a passing of time. 
The fourth way that you can add interest to your paintings is by helping the eye move and dance across the page. And the way that you can do that is by thinking about your composition, by intertwining and connecting your flowers through foliage and leaves and stems and other kind of filler flowers. So, so I usually gravitate towards S shapes or C shapes because I feel like they are shapes that are very organic and they kind of emulate nature really well. Um, so I tend to kind of fill the space up on the page using these um, shapes and think about balance as well. So um, the direction of the way the flowers are, but also the way that I use the colours on the page. Last but not least, the fifth way that you can add interest to your work is by creating focal points on your painting. And focal points are where the eye naturally gravitates towards. And that can be done using colour, that can be done using composition, that can be done actually using hero flowers. So um, earlier when I said that you can paint flowers at different stages of their bloom cycle, a flower in full bloom would be a great example of a hero flower. And that would be the thing that would instantly capture somebody's attention and draw them into your painting and then from that flower then you would kind of move your eye to other parts and it would be like um maybe through color or it could be maybe through filler flowers and filler flowers are usually like connecting flowers almost filler flowers would be helping you because they would be placed in between the focal flowers and they would help you kind of bring the whole painting together and connect all your main flowers together. And so it won't look so spaced out, bitty, and it will just bring the whole painting together that it will look like one piece. So the essence of a focal point is to basically capture the attention of the viewer. So the focal hero flowers are usually the flowers that are the star of the show. You spend a lot of time painting these and you want to place them in areas on the page that you feel you want the person to be drawn to first. And the rest of the page kind of needs to be a little softer so that that hero flower stands out. So those are five ways that you can add interest to your paintings and I hope that you found that information useful and I hope you've enjoyed having a look at examples of where I have put these into practice. In an ideal world, if you could incorporate all of those five things into your one painting, then that would be a showstopper. Thank you so much for watching.